Map fans, before we get into today's video, I uh, just wanted to run over subscriptions. Don't forget that when you do subscribe, like so, don't forget to click the little bell. The bell will notify you every time a new BGIS video is out. So check that if you want to know as soon as videos are uploaded. All right, on with the vid. I want to talk about fire in today's video and fire data. Now John Nelson from Esri has been at it again and made this active fires visualization. So you can Google for that and have a look. Um, he's got a really good blog post about how things were put together and he's using what looks like the firefly style. So we'll talk about that in another video. So if we go to the actual visualization itself, you can see it looks like this and it's pretty neat um, it has got up-to-date fire information for the US it looks pretty good so I started thinking what would it look like to make your own version of a map like this and the first port of call of course is data first thing I found was this Copernicus um, data source and it's called FIS and it has European uh, fire data available. Now you can see over on the right hand side, they've got a data request form, but you can actually just get straight into the data if you want. So you can go to data and services, click on that. And we have all sorts of different fire data available. I'll show you what the fire data looks like in a second, but first of all, we're just gonna go back and have a look at the global wildfire information system that EFIS also have going on. So this is brand new apparently. I guess this is GWIS, GWIS. So let's click on that. And here we are. Tons and tons of options in the left hand side um, to enable you to play around with the layers. And this looks really neat. Nice slippy map going on there. I haven't been able to find any way to get a WMS or WFS out of this yet. So maybe that'll be coming, maybe it won't be. But do have a play around with that. Very cool to have a look at. Now if we go back to the data itself, let's go onto this data and services page. And there's tons of different data available, lots of different timeframes. So you've got the temporal scale there as well. And you'll notice next to each of these, there is a little I. So that will give you some idea of what that data is made up like. Let's have a look at burnt areas, for example. And lots and lots of information here. So it is very much worthwhile reading all of this metadata before you actually start playing around with the fire data so that you know what you're actually looking at. Now for this demo, I'm just gonna have a look at any data. I'm gonna go for active fires on the last seven days, last 30 days actually. Let's download that. So you just click the download. There's no login or anything like that. This is freely available data, which is great. And I'll put that in here. It's not a bad idea to name your files accordingly. So let's have a look at this data in QGIS3. I'm just gonna go over to add raster. I'm going to navigate to where I saved it, modus last 30, open that up, add that. And there's our fire data. Now we seem to have some kind of legend automatically added. I'm not sure what that legend is because it's not showing up in my layers panel. So anybody's guess really. You may also need to add some uh, context to this so that you know where you're looking at. So I'm just going to go to my XYZ tiles. Bring in Bing, and we can see the kind of reach here. So European data, fires in the last 30 days. And you'll notice that this map looks a little bit squashed. That means that we're probably in WGS 84. Yep, there's our current CRS, it is WGS84. So that's a very quick look at the FS data set. There is a bunch of different data, obviously, that you can get from their website. So I'll put a link below to that website. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. If anybody's working on any fire stuff at the moment, I'd be really interested to hear from you. So take care and happy mapping.